Hey guys, Marcos Lopez here from Congatshops.com and I just want to give you a brief rundown of your new LP timbales. So let's talk a little about the history of the timbales, how to set them up, how to tune them, and get you started playing your first groove. The timbal, also known as paila, evolved in Cuba in the late 19th century. It's a descendant of the European timpani or kettle drum. More specifically, those that were brought over by Italian opera companies and were used to accompany wind ensembles and military parade bands in colonial Cuba. During the early 20th century, as Cuban musicians traveled to and from the US, the timbal became influenced by the drum set and transitioned from being constructed of the materials found locally in sugar cane factories to the metal shells, stands, and hardware we see today. The setup used by timbaleros nowadays often includes a variety of bells and blocks as you'll see in this video. So now that we have a very brief history on the origin of the timbal, let's get to it. So when we first set up our timbales, we'll open up the legs of the stand by loosening the bottom wing nut, pulling it all the way to the bottom of the stand and tightening it again, making sure the side of the stand with the wing nut at the bottom faces us. Then we'll loosen the wing nut at the arm of the stand to bring it up and make sure to keep the rubber bridge turned horizontally. We'll also want to make sure that the base of the arm is facing away from us by adjusting the wing nut where the arm meets the base of the stand. As we mount the drums, we want to make sure that we place the larger drum first, followed by the smaller drum. Because I'm left-handed, I'm placing the smaller drum, the macho, on the left, and the larger drum, the hembra, on my right. If you're right-handed, you'll want to do the opposite. Once the drums are placed on the stand, we'll secure them with the L-bracket, placing the washer down before we tighten the longer wing nut. We can also adjust the rubber bridge up or down, so that it helps us keep the drums horizontal. Now that we have the L bracket attached, we can insert the mounting rod and adjust it to bring it closer or further away. Now, if you're working with a LP Matador Series timbal, you'll notice that the L bracket configuration is just a little bit different. Once you have your stand and arm in position, you'll attach the mounting rod directly from the arm and simply slide your drums onto the brackets. Now that we have our basic setup, we'll want to adjust the height of the timbal accordingly so that our arms and hands can be resting at a neutral position. This might entail having your drums a little higher or lower depending on your height or the length of your arms. But generally speaking, having the drum head somewhere just above the height of our belly button is a good place to start. The timbal I have here is a LP Tito Puente series bronze model with a 13 inch macho and a 14 inch embra equipped with Remo Clear Ambassador heads. It also has a traditional side lock tuning system. The timbal you have in front of you might have a top tuning style rim. But in any case, the tips I'll give you here will still apply. Now when it comes to tuning congas, we'll sometimes choose a specific pitches to tune our drums to, depending on the style of the music we're playing, as well as our own personal taste. But this is not often the case when tuning the timbal. Normally, the drums will be tuning intervals of a perfect fourth, perfect fifth, a sixth, or octaves in some cases. This choice will depend heavily on the genre and style of music, as well as the role of the timbal in each particular setting. So make sure to check out your favorite records, keeping the musical context in mind, while you work on replicating the tuning. Personally, I don't tune the timbal to an exact note, but I do use certain pitches as a reference. Generally speaking, we want the embra, the lower pitch drum, tuned between the B and octave below middle C and the B just below middle C, and the macho, or higher pitch drum, between the F below middle C and the C an octave above middle C. So when we go to tune our drums, the most important thing to keep in mind is that we want to adjust the tension evenly with each lock to raise or lower the pitch of the drum. To raise the pitch, we'll turn each lock clockwise, a half or quarter turn at a time, as we work our way around the drum. Remember, the drums will take a moment to settle as you play them, so to avoid the pitch drastically changing, give a hefty strike in the middle of the drum with the palm of your hand to force the drum head to settle a bit to make it easier to maintain the pitch. Continue to play using different sounds, listen closely to evaluate the pitch, making any micro adjustments you need to, and you're good to go. For a more comprehensive guide to tuning the timbal, Make sure to check out our free in-depth tuning guide by clicking the link below. Now, there are endless options as far as what blocks, bells, and accessories we can use in our timbal setup. But a timbal setup using a modern salsa context commonly includes a contracampana, also known as a mambo bell, a small chacha bell, and a jam block, which is a synthetic, more durable wood block. We can also, of course, get a wide variety of different sounds by playing on the shell of the drums, the cascara, and also by playing in the center of the drum head, as well as by playing ring shops near the edge.
Feel free to experiment with different setups and sounds, listening to different recordings from different genres, eras, and players as a reference. So let's move on to working on our first groove, a simple pattern used to play cha-cha-cha, which we can also use in a rock or pop setting when the music calls for it. It's an easy one-bar groove that will require just a bit of independence between our hands. We'll be playing four quarter notes on the mouth of our cha-cha bell with our dominant hand, while playing a muffled stroke in the center of the hembra on beat two, followed by open tone on beat four, both with our non-dominant hand. Let's check it out slowly first. One, two, three, four. Now let's work on that at a bit more common tempo for the cha 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 with one of the exclusive audio practice loops included with a congashops.com membership. One, two, three, four. So there you have it, a few simple tips and a super versatile groove to play on the timbal. Now that you have an idea of how to get started, feel free to experiment with some of the different sounds you can get and create some of your own grooves. If you're interested in learning more about how to play timbal in depth and step by step, make sure to head over to congashops.com and grab your free 7-day trial for access to over 50 hours of exclusive lessons.